Hey Spuddies, Potato McWhiskey here and welcome to Let's Play Hearts of Iron as France in our tutorial slash introductory campaign where I spend a little bit of time talking about why I'm making certain decisions and why those decisions are good and why you might not want to be able to do them. Now I could in theory dismantle the Maginot line which would give me some construction speed. But I definitely don't want to do that. I don't think that makes sense. Um, Refuge to German scientists. Yeah, I definitely want to see about doing these. It would hurt my stability. But it would give me research time. That's a really precious political power that I have a hard time making use of now my chief of army I could grab the defense expert but we won't quite bother with that yet and we'll just keep churning along uh, we're missing a lot of artillery that'll be something we fix later we're also missing a lot of motorized um, we have a lot of work cut out for ourselves to uh to build up an army. We have our subjects, let's have a look at them. See how you're doing on the manpower front. Alright, that's fine. These guys have gone up to higher conscription laws. We have lots of their manpower in the field trying to deploy. We have a massive deficit of guns. It's going to take up a hell of a long time to build that up. Which is why we're trying to build up our civilian industry. So that we can... Um, start to deal with that in fact we will be building more infrastructure here and then doing military factories pretty much starting now so we can start to produce those all important infantry equipment remember we don't have a whole lot of time before germany is going to be looking to go to war with us so it's something to keep in mind they're getting their factories up now I'm going to want to do those at some point, but I really need to get my army reformed. It's incredibly important that I do that. Nineteen thirty-nine is when the war starts for France, and we need to be able to stall the Germans for as long as possible. Okay, there is levee en masse. We immediately get started on ground battery because we want to get to this as fast as possible. We also need to do this to get rid of our disjointed government, but that's going to take a while. It should be done by the end of the year. Ah, disjointed government. Hoping I can get rid of that pretty quick. It would be very, very nice. We'd actually have political power that we could spend. I'd like to get to free trade. It would give me a lot of output in my factories and a lot of construction speed and potentially more civilian factories from trade. Um, that would be really, really nice if I could do that. There's improved machine tools. That's another boost to our factory production. So you can see now the cap is 70%. So Effectively, from the start of the game, we've increased our capacity by about 40% in terms of production, which is a fairly large increase. Um, resource gain efficiency doesn't really bother me. Engineers are going to be important, so I want to make sure I have those researched early. We'll have construction and dispersed industry soon. Those will be useful. See, we're almost up to three full lines of civilian industry producing for us, which is quite nice. We have a fair number of factories. There's Grand Battery. Chat de Bataille. Not long now until we can get rid of these two really, really bad folk, really bad things that are hurting us. We almost have enough political power to make a meaningful change. 
Okay, we have some free dockyards. I think the most important thing to get is a um, a decent number of convoys going. I'll put three of those. That means we're getting about a, about a convoy a week. Right? With four factories, we're just about... Oh, we'll put up to four factories, so we're just about getting a convoy every week. And then we're going to put four on... No, I could go for a carrier, but it would take two years to build a carrier. Um, it's really not quite good enough. What about maybe some cruisers? I could get one of those a year. Uh, maybe I would be better off building destroyers. I can get about four of those a year. Or I could go for really cheap submarines. I get about nine of those a year and maybe be able to use them to raid some merchant shipping. I think that sounds quite good. And they're quite cheap too. There's dispersed industry and construction, so we're going to build these even faster now. Uh, and what we can do now is we can go through, and we know for a fact that we want to build more civilian factories in here, and military factories in here. So let's make sure we move Poitou up to the top. So this is now going to, it's only going to take us 60 days to build a civilian factory, which is really, really fast compared to the 113 days it was at the start of the game. We want to just make sure we're filling up. This industry is going to be the last to fall, so we want it filled up quite nicely. Now, resource gain efficiency could be quite good here. We'll, ha we'll have to make a decision on whether or not we want to do that based on other factors. Radio is really important because this gives you reinforce rate, which just generally means your troops are better at fighting. It's kind of hard to explain it exactly, but uh, we could get this. It has a base cost of 100 days. I think I'll let this run out for now. And I'm going to go ahead and just get this infantry equipment, which will make our infantry slightly better at defending and attacking, which is quite nice. It's always a good thing to pick these up. Um, we don't really have much else we can do right now, so we may as well get some of these you know, texts that are going to be useful later. Britain is sending a troop down through my thing. These two guys are still fighting. It looks like Nationalist Spain will win, which is going to be a problem for me when um, they join the Germans. We're going to go to free trade. That means more of our resources are getting sent out to the market. Um, it means we're also getting a faster research time. So now we have a 15%. So we're just generally speaking, research things a lot faster. Um, I should actually sit down one day and do the calculations of how much faster your tech is really being researched, uh, like your effective tech multiplier when you have a certain level of research speed, because it's actually more than you would think. Loire is ready to actually start building, so we'll go ahead and put that down there. We're into July, we're almost finished the Chal de Bataille, and heavy tanks could be fun to use. I think I might stick with lights or mediums or something like that. We'll have to make decisions about that. Is a leadership but purges. So we can't do army reform yet. We're going to do metropolitan France and see if we can pick up some factories and some infrastructure. Looks like the war in China has broken out. Not much we can do. We could potentially send them an attaché to get the army experience, but we don't really have the political power to do that. Um, we are slowly gaining stability. When does this go away? July, August, October. So our next focus will be defensive stratagem. I think I might pick up industrial expansion first. Although this is worth a lot of political power, so yeah. And then we'll immediately fill out to uh, get these factories, if I can get them, and the research slot. Missing equipment production. We're currently now down below the 40k mark. We haven't increased our productivity at all right now, which is fine. It's okay. Um, we're mostly looking to improve our production of 
this sort of equipment. So we're going to start another line of military factories over here. Quite good to pick those up. The reason I'm putting the infrastructure ahead of this is because it's more efficient to spend production time on here than here until this is fully finished. Just trying to get the most out of my productive, productive, uh, the productive capacity of my factories, essentially. And this will about line up to where I wanted to start making military factories, which was late, sort of, or early 2000, uh, 1938. Uh, defensive stratagem. I could wait the, uh, I'm going to wait the few days here. I think that's going to be important to get rid of this as soon as possible. It'll also mean we can send volunteers, although it looks like Republican Spain has already lost, which is unfortunate. Okay, there's engineer companies, radios, and stuff like that. These are all fighting techs. They're quite useful. Engineers and recon are good things to have. We're not ready to research any of this. Um, we're not ready to research better casts, which we're currently using. This is now, even though it's ahead of time, it's only a little bit ahead of time. And considering it's another 3% research time, I think it's worth it to research that a little bit ahead of time. Um, now, research, re resource gain efficiency. I don't think it's going to be a huge problem for us to have re resources right now. So I'm not going to bother. This is only 240 days, but you know, I don't want to, I don't want to sacrifice that. This is only 111 days and the base one is a hundred. This is definitely worth just getting out of the way. Um, yeah, you have to wait till 1939 to get this tank. Uh, what else could we do? We could do battlefield support. We could do an air doctrine. This will give us slightly better fighter detection and air support uh, mission efficiency. So we'll do a little bit of air doctrine to make our troops better, our, our, our planes better. Ah, all right. So we no longer have the strength and government thing. We can do defensive stratagems. So that will hopefully get rid of this disjointed, um, disjointed government problem, which should really, really, really improve our political power. We actually have some carriers, interestingly enough. We have a decent number of air wings too. Mostly worried about getting my um, close air support built up. Close air support I find is quite, quite useful um, because it can fight Navy and sea, which are usually where you need planes the most. And it can do direct damage. It can do air superiority and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I find close air support is quite good. Poor little Republican Spain. I mean, if you can survive a little bit longer, I might be able to send you some troops, but I just don't know how much longer you're going to survive, really. Let's go for army reform. I should in theory be able to send volunteers, but regardless of world tension, right? Because I have that send volunteers thing. Yeah, like I should be able to send volunteers right now. It's kind of... Uh, I guess they need to be democratic, right? Any democratic countries at war? No, these are all either fascist or non-aligned. Oh well. Republican Spain will fall, which is uh, pretty bad for me. Pretty bad. They're losing their civil war. Oh well. 
we're no longer suffering that really bad penalty so we can actually do ah right we have our first military factory finished excellent um this is great so now we're going to start actually ramping up our production of these things because we just we just need to have our army supplied uh, speaking of motorized i don't think i quite need need all these motorized divisions I think i'll just switch them over to infantry that'll free up some motorized that i can use for some other purpose okay yugoslavia uh i'm gonna send them I'm going to send them this because I get the consumer goods factories for 180 days and a 5% consumer goods factory reduction. It's an extra three, uh, three consumer goods factories building buildings for me, which is always really nice. Now, I'm going to grab the cheap army defense expert, just so we have them, so we don't forget to get them. I'm also going to want to get the infantry expert. Oh, really, we don't have an, an infantry Infantry expert, that's unfortunate. Okay, we have improved our artillery. We're in January 1938, so we can start researching better infantry equipment. We are going to research this infantry equipment a little bit ahead of time, because it's pretty important to get this one. Because this one basically gives you a 50% bonus to the damage your infantry can do. Um, so that's, that's pretty important to get that early, because it means your infantry are just a lot stronger. All right, good stuff. And Anschluss, formation flying. Let's make sure we have our text research to make our infantry better. You can see they're slowly getting stronger over time. There's army reform. We no longer have the penalty to um, researching doctrines. So we can safely research doctrines now which we will start doing soon. Uh, let's do... I think we have the time to get these this research slot. So let's head down here and grab this industrial expansion, which will net me a few more factories. Uh, let's go ahead and build up this province right here. Okay. We're industrializing the western coast um, just because it's far away from Germany and Italy and it's less likely to get conquered. You can see some of these troops are finally starting to get the equipment they need. Which is good. About to deploy some of these. If we look at the Asian theater, you can see we have a lot of troops now deployed um, in the field. In fact, we could probably safely train these to get a little bit of experience. They're pretty cheap to train. Won't cost me much in the way of guns. Now we're losing about a gun a day, which is fine. So let's bring these up again. slowly increasing the product the level of production i have invested into these infantry equipment and support equipment are pretty important it's going to be what nets me the uh best defensive line we are definitely going to want to get at guns or at very least our uh anti-air i might use anti-air this game Here's the industrial expansion. This is going to net me a lot of civilian factories working away from me. Let's get another set of infrastructure going over here in Ile de France. Let's see, we have three full lines now producing. And we can go up to partial mobilization, which will lower the amount of consumer factories we're spending and increase the amount of factories we have working on the lines. 
also gives us a construction bonus. So now these these uh, military factories are only taking like a few days to build each. You can see we're up to 63 and 12 compared to their 50-ish and their 60-ish. So we definitely need to need to catch up a bit. It's going to be tough. Let's grab those military factories. I do want this fortification stuff. We are going to start researching doctrines. And I think we're going to make the decision to switch to mass assault doctrine. I think it just has, I think it's just more a more interesting from a gameplay perspective than it is to play grand battle plan. I wish I could make the decision whether or not I wanted to use a tech boost. It's kind of annoying that I have to use it. It feels weird that I have to use it, if, even if I don't really want to. Okay, let's get started on the infantry equipment. It's going to take a little bit longer than normal, but we will get a full year of producing it, which is really, really important. Uh, you know what else? I could probably train this cavalry too safely without it really hurting me and it would net me a little bit of experience i definitely want to get a theorist if i can um a military theorist is going to be important to get okay we finished up here let's plant down a little bit more infrastructure in saunter let's do this in Ile de france let's do military factories and then in Santa Sud, we'll do military factories as well. We want to have a, we want to always be building a few civilian factories to pay for your resource costs. Okay, this is, would be a little bit ahead of time, but we do need the output and the construction. Definitely want the output. Um, I could get started on some of these. Don't really need any of these. I think recon companies and engineer companies are fine. Um, don't need any of these. We won't need new close air support for a while. I could get these decryption and encryption things because these actually give us a combat bonus. So I'm going to grab decryption here and I'll grab encryption as well. Right now I'm just trying to get everything that will give me uh, combat bonuses. Germany is demanding the Sudetenland. Okay, that means we have, we're running out of time. Germany is starting to get big and scary. There's mass assault. This will give me supply grace and outer supply. What we really want is this defense and depth with the entrenchment bonus. There's military factories. We'll add another three to here. One to here, and one to here. And I think it's about time we added some artillery back into the mix. At a slightly higher rate than support equipment. No, actually, about equal to support equipment is fine. And let's get that extra research slot. That's going to help us get our industry and stuff into order. Okay, so a lot of the challenges that we encountered are being dealt with. We definitely need this military theorist. He's going to let us research these doctrines faster. Um, and he's also going to give us some passive army experience, which we can use to manage our infantry templates. In particular, what I want to do is I want to go in here and edit these and bring them down to 16 combat width. That's going to cost me 20. So if I bring these down to 16 combat width, I should be able to train 
should be able to swap more of these units over to the Mountaineer template. Really? Uh, I guess I need more deployed troops. So let's get the military theorist. That's going to net me some passive uh, daily experience. That'll let me change some of my templates before the war begins, hopefully. We're currently down to a deficit of 25,000 infantry equipment rather than the deficit we were at, which is quite nice. Okay, so let's take some of these guys from the Asian theater and bring them over to France. We're going to use them as cheap, expendable, sort of meat, meat shields. And we will use them Hmm, where will we use them? Well, these guys are going to... Hold the line over here for now. Get them redeployed. Now these aren't super, super amazing troops. They're... In fact, they're really crappy. They're only good at, like, defending a position for a while, and that's really about all they can do. But that's all they need to do, is they just need to be able to tank a bit of damage for me um, in this war and hold this hold this line here and be entrenched here and, you know, dug in. So this would let me leave the Allies and create my own faction... Um, but we're going to leave the Czechs to their fate. So, unfortunately, they get the Western Betrayal. But we need more time to fight Germany. So it's not going to work. They're reasserting their Eastern claims. Danziger War shall be happening soon, TM. We definitely want this early. Um, but we also want these, and I think... The, we want the factory output from dispersed industry. And we are going to pick up fortification bonus and start extending the uh, defensive lines. Uh, I'm going to take the uh, entrenchment guy. Definitely want to be able to entrench better. We're going to take these tanks out of this and add them to a new division. Or a new sort of army. These guys. I want a defensive leader. A trickster. I want a someone who has entrenchment. Alphonse Georges. And then I want another entrenchment guy like him. So this is gonna make our entrenchment better. You can see this. And entrenchment makes you do more damage and take less damage. So you want your entrenchment as high as possible when you're holding a line. We'll put a panzer leader in charge of this. Let's see. Uh, cautious. Charles de Gaulle. Sure thing. In charge of the panzers. And then we will have a... I don't have another defensive leader. Gorilla fighter. I'll use the trickster for defending this line here. There's pocket defense. We want to get deep battle. It's going to give us organization. More importantly, it's going to give us entrenchment so that we can entrench deeply. Now, this also gave us plus 10 entrenchment, but I think I prefer 
it's a lot of entrenchment, but we want to be we want to be heavily entrenched in our position so that we're very difficult to push back. Essentially, is what we're trying to do. We also have a decent amount of close air support built up now. We're getting about one close air support per day. Also starting to build up our artillery, which is really, really nice. Excellent. In terms of construction. Got a lot of factories coming out. There's decryption. This is ahead of time. Um, oh, yes, we definitely want to get some anti-air on our divisions. Let's talk to these divisions. We want this for the piercing. You can see that plus nine piercing. That'll make their light tanks um, quite weak to us. But it'll also mean we take less damage from their close air support. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and slap in this, this unit right here. We'll remove one infantry and then eventually we'll want to place an artillery back in here as well. But I'll leave this infantry in here for now. And we'll save this as it is. Let's grab all these guys. Make sure they are... Division. Let's get a different picture for this so we can tell that it's a colonial division. Oh, right, I need to make sure that that actually goes through. Uh, you can see, I want all of you to be division to infantry. Now, we need to start producing AA guns. And how many AA do we need per group? We need 30 AA guns. Right. So that means we're going to need like six factories on AA to give us the piercing we need. We're at a bit of a deficit here, but that should be fine. Uh, we've got even more of these troops ready. Let's go ahead and transfer them over to that guy. What's your recruiting laws on? Unstable. Limited conscription. Okay. That's fine. This, is, this gives us more access to manpower. Those cheap colonial divisions can actually hold... Uh, pretty well defensively for quite a while. Uh, we are going to want to start to produce other things. Uh, let's cancel this. We're going to set these to low priority. And we're going to start to train some extra infantry divisions. Let's put about 10 in production. Um, we're going to put these on medium priority. I'm going to put them on high priority because they need to be built very quickly. You've only got about a year to get a lot of troops out. If I can get another 20 divisions by the end of that year, it would be quite nice. Uh, we want to add artillery here. And then we're going to get rid of one of these infantry. So here's what it'll look like in the end. Um, just get rid of some of this and we'll... Add anti-air, add artillery, remove this. This will give us 20 combat width, but we need more experience. Well, actually, we could do this now. This would leave us with 20 combat width. Uh, I do something when I break through. We'll lower our HP, but about 200 HP, I think, is pretty solid. Um, now, it does lack a bit of defense, but it does a lot more damage. Um, which I think is the important part. And it has piercing, a decent amount of piercing, and a decent amount of air attack to fight off enemy bombers. I think I would like to get rid of support artillery and just use line artillery. And the good news is, once we have the infantry combat with, we'll add a little bit of infantry back and that'll give it the HP to absorb uh, more damage and it'll be more production efficient. 
I'm currently a little bit behind on all these things, but we can make it better. Okay, civilian factories are free. Let's keep producing uh, military factories right here. I wonder how much we're up to now. 23 compared to the 89. Ouch. We do have the civilian factories, though. Those are going to work in our favor. The longer we can survive, the more they pay off for us. Okay, the Germany is claiming Memel. And we are splitting our army up to be ready. So our troops are digging in, essentially, right now. They're... Um, currently we only have a dig-in bonus of 14% here, but if we look over here, for example, you can see these guys have a dig-in bonus of 16, because their leaders are giving them some benefits. You can see over here, it is another 16. And if we go have a look at this, once this is finished, this will give us plus 5 entrenchment, which will give us a bonus to defense and attack, which is always really, really, really nice. Let's go ahead and create a close air support wing. I'm going to use 250, well, I like to use 200. 200 is about a good number, I think, of close air support stationed here. You're going to be worrying about northern France. You'll be doing close air support. Let's get rid of these fighter wings. We're relatively low on manpower, but we should be fine. We have a lot of non-core manpower that we're making use of. Okay, let's get these Alpine forts to be better protected. We need these forts to uh, be able to withstand the German advance for long enough, because we don't, we aren't really in a defensive position. It's not like we're China, where we have, you know, some some advantages to be able to defend ourselves. So where are those 24 of these guys? They are going to be going on the border with Italy. Uh, we're also going to want to produce another type of division that is good for defending ports. It's going to be just like five infantry and an engineer squad, which is typically kind of what I use. Um, let's see if we can find an infantry squad. Defensive Doctrine is great. Let's go ahead and train these troops. So they're slightly better defensively. One thing I am going to mod into these Colonials is I want to give them Engineers because that'll increase their entrenchment. And I also want to give that to my infantry, um, which is why I'm training so that I can get a little bit more experience. Let's grab all these. These should be the regular infantry divisions. Cost me a bit of stuff, but... Go ahead and train up. Can't quite train another special forces, but not too far from now we will. We have the political power. We are going to go ahead and take... Um, let's see, the silent war course would give me a lot of political power. I don't think it's going to be worth it though. What we really need is a war industrialist so we can build those military factories faster. want this piercing to go up, so I'm going to start researching this immediately. Um, we can start producing those guns now. You can see this is slightly cheaper. This will reduce our efficiency, so we're producing 134 per day. Now we're producing 50 per day, but that will slowly creep back up over time, so that's good. And 
we definitely want to get these things like soft attack and defense ahead of time. Uh, let's see. Engineer entrenchment is going to be important, so let's grab that. I need as much of this experience as I can get. We're going to have the Alpine Fort soon, which will make it harder for Italy to declare war. Let's go ahead and uh, keep training. I need that experience pretty bad. So now all of these provinces have forts in them, which will make it harder for Italy to attack me when they do eventually get around to it. We're also going to extend the Maginot line so that we can defend against the Germans up here. We have lots of planes in reserve. Let's make a new wing of uh, fighters. We'll go with 200 as well. Uh, I want to reduce you. To this, you are going to be set on air superiority and interception here to protect this. Northern France. Northern France is incredibly important. We're going to be creating another close air support thing here set to assist. And so we'll have some bombers acting in these areas to defend us. Hopefully we don't have to deal with Spain. Um, getting declared war on by Spain would be a big pain in the ass. Let's have a look at the Asian theater now. Okay. Let's get most of these. I want to leave one guy there. Get them moving out to the new world or the old world to protect us. A lot of colonial divisions. We want to give these guys um, engineers. But first, yeah, I think I want to give them engineers first. So let's give it to the Cambodian colonials. They will get engineer companies, which will give them a lot of entrenchment, which will make them a lot stronger. That will mean our support equipment needs are going to go up significantly, but more importantly, um, it means these guys are going to be able to entrench a lot more. You know? And that's pretty important. There's dispersed industry. Let's go ahead and get advanced machine tools so that we can produce more efficiently. Germany's going to be getting the war going here soon. Czechoslovakia is going to be running into trouble. Uh, improved worker conditions, or do I want to save up my points to... I could do the extra research slot. Definitely want to do cast later. Um, I think for now I'm going to do like nuclear effort and extra research slot. And we're trading a lot of factories right now as far as I can tell. Yeah, we're getting a lot of factories off people. Tell you what, I'm going to call that this the end of the episode. Well, maybe maybe we'll go all the way up until they declare war on me. Yeah, we're really, really low on artillery. And we're really, really low on AA. But hopefully by the time we're ready, that'll be good to go. So I'm going to turn off training. Because I just don't think I can afford to lose any more uh, equipment. We need all the equipment we can get. To fight this war. What are you lacking? Deploy. We've got 20 divisions here. Let's take one, two. Let's take four of them. Assign them to here. Let's take four of them. Assign them to here. Let's take these 12. 
We'll create a new order. Assign them to this guy. We have this guy. We will create another fallback line here. That they will help defend. We have some more civilian factories. Uh, do I need more civvies? Let's do the Midi Pyrenees. Ah, we have opened up more uh, potential here. Let's make sure I'm building these in the right places. That's where all my civvies go, okay. I want to build up the provinces I already have stuff in. There's a sort of method to my madness, I promise. Let's make sure all these are at the top. Take 54 days for all three of these civvy factories to be done. And then we'll start. Well, you should be at the top. Shanxi has capitulated. I shouldn't have left our alliance. So there is another bunch of land forts over here for me. We are going to go ahead and do nuclear effort to get this extra research slot. There's more colonial troops here. It's good. Now eventually I want to upgrade these into the full-sized... Um, these divisions but for now if we check our subjects um here you can see we're using up all their manpower which is good these guys are on recruitment laws all that sort of good stuff they're now doing armament effort so they'll actually be able to build um their own stuff they did aviation effort pretty heavily for some reason i never know why they do that they tend to do it for some reason wish i could explain it i cannot Okay, um, ground support, all weather, air reformer, um, tactical bombing will be useful since we're going heavy into casts. We're going to want to have political power saved up to go to total mobilization. And, um, so we're just going to save our political power for now. With a lot of convoys. A lot of fleets. This destroyer fleet and sub fleet. We've got these fleets over here. These fleets here. We're going to want to make sure we use our fleets to control the Mediterranean against Italy in particular. Oh, and you know what? We're going to want troops over here too. Let's take those three... Let's take three of these colonial troops and create a new army assigned to the African Mediterranean theater. And we'll set them up on the border with Italy. We don't want to lose this over here. There's a civilian factory here. It's worth having. Improved war worker. Now, weekly war support. That could be a good expenditure of um, of political power. And for sure, that war support is going to mean a lot. There's defense and depth. Now, we have a question here. Do we want to go deep battle or mass mobilization? Mass mobilization is a little bit better at defense, in my opinion means you take less attrition, your partisans are better, um, gives you a recruitable, recruitable population. Deep battle is a little bit more better on the offense, but since we're going to be playing defensively, I'm going to go ahead and pick up the People's Army. Hopefully that'll give us the ability to hold the line for a very long time. See, these guys are up to 30 um, entrenchment. If we check out some of these... Um, 
you the ones yeah you're the ones with this so you have 39 percent entrenchment which is great it's really really nice some of these benefits are not active the defensive doctrine for example what we would want is to get infantry leader and ambusher because that would give us maximum entrenchment this guy maxime Weigand, he could get unyielding defender which would give us a defense bonus to all our units so we're going to take that i think that's for sure worth having Okay, there's the engineer company. That's going to mean our engineers now provide us even more entrenchment, meaning more defensive benefits. Uh, I think we'll pick up a little bit of industry tech, and then we want to start researching mostly, mil mostly military techs to stay um, competitive with Germany. Let's get another one of these. I think it's safe to expand there. Finish off these sieve factories. Now, the downside is because we've built up our economy so well, when we do eventually get to war with Germany... Uh, if they beat us, they will get a lot from us. But I'm hoping that around about the end of this month, we're going to end the episode. And then hopefully in the next episode, we'll actually be at war. So Italy has joined the Axis, so we made the right choice to defend this border. What are you missing? Towed artillery, towed anti-air, and some infantry equipment. Let's make sure we're prioritizing reinforcements. Deploy these set them to low priority these are all the divisions we're going to get to fight with 13 extra divisions we'll assign those to there these are my six tank divisions who are going to be hopefully running around and putting out fires and these guys are going to be hopefully just deterring Spain from attacking me. So now we're almost entirely focused on reinforcements. We're going to cancel these lines so that we have manpower in reserve. Okay, I could take refuge of these guys, but it's just I just don't have the political power to afford that right now. We'll go ahead and get the extra research slot. And once we tick over to the end of June, that's right about when Danziger War is going to be just about the trigger, which means we're very close to going to war. Uh, okay, you can stop training now. However, I would like to train these guys because they are actually really, really important. But these guys are well-trained. Because they only really get one shot shot to hold the line. If they break, they and they, and that's it. And they break, it's it's all over for them. Okay, so June has passed. We're now into July. I'm going to save this, and uh, I'll see you in the next episode. And hopefully, we can beat the German menace. We have enough close air support to resupply our lines. We have plenty of motorized. We're still missing a lot of infantry equipment, but a lot of that is due to. Uh, having these things queued up, what we could do is we can cancel these and free up a lot of infantry equipment um, if we so desire, uh, which we will actually be doing. And that'll free up a lot of the demand for infantry equipment here. So now you can see we only have a 6,000 deficit, and that's about 64 days, which is right about when Germany is going to be looking to declare war on us. We have plenty of need for artillery and stuff like that, but we should be fine. We have some lighter tanks and some motorized to be able to reserve these divisions, uh, resupply them rather. They are green, so they're not going to be super great, but um, it's really not not a huge amount we can do about that. We're just going to have to accept that they're going to kind of suck, and they're they're going to these guys are going to be in charge of doing counterattacks, and these are going to be mostly manually managed, while my infantry are going to be doing their best to hold the line without much intervention from me. Okay, so I'm going to call that the end of the episode. I want to thank you guys very much for watching. Hope you guys are enjoying this series. Please remember to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. Remember to leave a like if you want to directly support my channel. And remember to leave a comment if you want to give me your feedback. Other than that, I want to say I love you all very much. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.